I've been a busy, sick girl today. So I'm making this video and I haven't even uploaded the other two videos for the last two days. I am not doing good at being a daily vlogger and documenting my human experience, but I'm sick, so please excuse me. This is what I'm making for dinner. Super cold and icy raining. So what has your girl done today? I um, woke up, watched an episode of Euphoria, I cleaned my fish tank, cleaned the room some, disinfected things, washed dishes, did homework, did some work at home, and now I'm doing this. COVID can't stop me. <laughs> um, but I still need to do some reading, writing, actually doing that this time. Um, and then I need to email about booking a tattoo appointment and a hotel for when we go to Asheville. Oh, I guess I should leave at the point part where I took like a two hour nap. And tomorrow I really need to get some rest because I'm supposed to go back to work on Tuesday. That'll be five days, so I need to get lots of rest. Being a soul is easy. It's being a human that's hard. Being a soul, having a human experience, can sometimes be lonely, confusing, and painful. But at the same time, it can be incredibly glorious, magnificent, breathtaking, and sweet. The polarity and separation here on Earth is a lot for me to deal with. <clears throat> it's a miracle if we get through life with an open heart, front and back. It's possible to live through the extremes of this human life with an open heart. This doesn't mean we become immune to the heartache and heartbreak of this world. Actually, the opposite is true. The greatest challenge in this life, and all the others, is to find a way to keep your heart open through the extremes. The challenge for all souls having a human experience is to commit to being in the world, to having their soul fully embody their body, and to land all the way in, right down to the cells. My hair is such a mess. <laughs> Um, but what I just read, um, kind of goes along with why I am doing this. Um, so I've been somebody who's always leaning more to the transcendent side of existing in, like, the heavens <clears throat> and the, um, beyond the veil, um, rather than the physical plane. So I've always felt out of place, alienated, um. And never felt like this was home, but I'm trying to figure out how to integrate the two, um, because like the book talks about, you can't have one without the other. You can't just exist completely in transcendence, um, as well as you can't <clears throat> exist completely in imminence and thus being grounded to the physical world and refusing to see any of that or experience the transcendence. So how can you integrate the two? Um, so that's why I'm doing this, to really take the time to focus on everything that does make me human and that takes place on Earth and appreciate it and have gratitude for it and realize that it has to happen. Um, I can't exist solely in the stars. Um, I came here for a reason. Um, so I just thought that that was really interesting um, because that's exactly why I'm doing that, the human experience. Um, I'm trying to honor it and make peace with it because I've spent 20 something years of my life um, hating it and uh, well I'm almost 30 so <laughs> uh, obviously I'm here for a reason and I've gone through a deep awakening and this book this book man <laughs> it hits so hard um, but yeah so I invite you to do the same um, if you're somebody who um, is more of a physical grounded person um, I invite you to try and see beyond the veil and if you're somebody whose head is always in the clouds and in the stars then I invite you to try and ground yourself on earth and make peace with it and find the beauty um, what can you do to be more fully present in this moment on earth knight of pentacles five of wands you see